In this video, we are going to discover how to set up AWS RDS with Airflow so that the Meta Store will be highly available. Again, that means we won't have a single point of failure related to the Meta Store, as if one instance of the Meta Store goes down, well, we will still be able to access the Meta Store of Airflow because we will have multiple instances of the Meta Store. And to do this, we are going to use AWS RDS. Again, I strongly advise you to not use the Postgres database that is brought by default with the HAM chart. This is not ready for production and you should definitely use another solution like AWS RDS. Now let's discover what we have right now. Well, if you go into your terminal and type kubectl get pods dash n prod, as you can see right there, we have three web servers because we have set up the web server to be highly available, but the pod here corresponds to the Metastore of Airflow and we don't want that pod anymore. Instead, we want to use AWS RDS. So let's do this. Open the AWS Management Console here and look for the services RDS. Then click on Create Database. From there, we can configure the relational database. In our case, we're going to keep standard create as we want all the options available. Select Postgres as it is the recommended database for Airflow. We can keep the latest version of Postgres. Then production, obviously. Here you have to put a DB instance identifier. In our case, we're going to put Airflow-Metastore. The username is Postgres, same for the password, Postgres, confirm with Postgres as well. The DB instance size in our case will be the burstable classes and we're going to select dbt2 micro. This is just for the example, obviously, if you are using Airflow in production, you should definitely use a larger instance like this one db.m5.xlarge. But in our case, we are going to stick with db.t2.micro. Then we can scroll down. Obviously, make sure that the multi-AZ deployment is selected. And this is where the database will be highly available because we are going to deploy the DB instances among different availability zones, AZA, AZB, and AZC. If you remember, we have set up the same thing for the EKS cluster. Then here, this is extremely important because we have to use the same VPC than the one we have deployed for the EKS cluster. And to do this, right click here, click on open link in a new tab and look for the service EKS. Then click on your cluster, networking, and make sure that you set the same VPC for the AWS RDS. So in my case, it is D9F, so back to RDS, I select the VPC with D9F. Okay, so make sure that this VPC is the same as the one from the EKS cluster. Next, we can scroll down. Let's keep the password authentication. And finally, we have an estimated monthly costs. Obviously, no worries, we are definitely not spending all of that money. We are just going to set up the database and as soon as this section is done, we are going to delete the instance. Finally, you can click on Create Database. At this point, we are going to wait a few minutes before getting the database set up and running. Here, you have to wait for the status to be active. I'm going to pause the video and come back when it's done. All right, as you can see, the database is available. This process took up 20 minutes for me. So again, you will have to wait maybe around 15 or 20 minutes before getting your database ready. Once it's done, you can go back to the workstation and we are ready to move on. Open the folder airflow-eks-config and releases and the file airflow-prod.yml as we are going to modify the release of Airflow running in production. Under the section values, we are going to add a new value just above web server, which is Postgres SQL enabled to false. 
that means we are not going to deploy the Postgres database along with that release corresponding to Airflow as we want to use AWS RDS. Next, we have to set up the connection to the AWS RDS. Here you can type data, then meta data connection, then we have to specify a user, which is Postgres, a password, Postgres as well, a host that we are going to define in a minute, a port, which is 5432 by default, and the name of the DB, which is Airflow dash Metastore. Okay, let's find the host right now. Go back to AWS RDS, click on the database, and here you have the host. So copy it, and paste it right there, like that. Actually, before deploying the new release of Airflow, I just made a mistake. Indeed, we didn't define any DB name during the setup of the AWS RDS, so we should put an empty value here. So put this tile right there and save the file. Next, the last thing we need to modify is the AWS RDS and more specifically, the security group used by the AWS RDS. So back to the service, click on modify, and scroll down until you reach the security group. Here, you have to select the same security group as the one deployed for the EKS cluster. Back to the EKS cluster, if you take a look right there, you have the cluster security group, so make sure that you are going to select the same one, B77 in my case. So back to RDS, I select the security group with B77 which is right there. Then you can remove the default security group. Finally, scroll down and click on continue, then select apply immediately, and modify DB instance. Perfect, now we are done, go back to the workstation, make sure that you have saved the file, and go into airflow eks dash config. Then git commit dash am airflow with AWS RDS and git push. Perfect. Finally, we synchronize the git repository with the EKS cluster in order to deploy the new release of airflow in production. So let's wait a little bit and it's done. Now if we type kubectl get pods dash n prod, you should obtain the same pods as shown from this output. If not, please wait for the pods corresponding to the web server and the scheduler to have the status running. One thing you have to notice here is that we don't have any Postgres pod corresponding to the Metastore anymore. Indeed, right now we are using the AWS RDS and that means we have successfully set up the AWS RDS with Airflow and now the Metastore is highly available and scalable. The last thing I would like to show you is if you open a new tab and go back to your AWS Management Console, then click on Services and EC2, then Load Balancers, let's select the load balancer corresponding to the prod environment, copy the DNS name, paste it, and as you can see, we land on the user interface of Airflow as expected. If you try to connect with admin, admin, this time it doesn't work. Why? Because we have just changed the meta database to use AWS RDS, and so we need to recreate the user admin. To do this, let's go back to the workstation and copy the name of one of the pods corresponding to the web server, for example. Then type kubectl exec-it 
paste the pod dash and prod dash dash slash bin slash bash. Enter. Okay, now you are inside the pod. Here, execute the command airflow create underscore user dash or admin to give the role admin dash u admin to set the username to admin dash e admin at admin.com to set the email of the admin dash f admin for the first name dash l admin for the last name and finally dash p for the password which is admin as well enter Okay, perfect. As you can see, the user admin has been created. Let's go back to the user interface of Airflow. Type admin, admin. And as you can see, we land on the DAX view as expected. So congratulations, at this point you have successfully set up AWS RDS in order to use it as your Metastore of Airflow. So that means your Metastore is highly available highly scalable, and now you have a robust Airflow instance running in production. Again, the only single point of failure that is still remaining is the one corresponding to the scheduler. But obviously, we will have to wait for Airflow 2.0 before having multiple schedulers running at the same time. In the meantime, let's take a quick break and see you in the next video.